Welcome to part two of my retrospective on the history of legendary and mythical Pokemon distribution events. If you missed part one, click the link in the description or tap the card icon in the corner to check it out. Following the success of legendary and mythical Pokemon distribution events in Generation 3, the series moved to the Nintendo DS doubled down on special events, once again taking full advantage of new features introduced in the upgraded hardware, most notably the local and online wireless communication functions for the DS. For local wireless events, key items and Pokemon were sent to players using special distribution cartridges built to wirelessly transfer event downloads to a game cartridge within range of the distribution unit. Three key items used to unlock events were distributed in Generation 4 using this method. The first of these items, the Secret Key, was distributed at local retail stores in April of 2009. Taking this item to the abandoned Team Galactic building in Eterna City in Pokemon Platinum unlocks a special room containing various appliances that allow the Pokemon Rotom to change into its newly introduced variants. Alongside the retail release, this event was also the first key item distributed via the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection service, a concept that would become a staple for the series in later entries. The second key item distributed for Pokemon Platinum was the Member Card. This item allows the player to access the Canalave City Inn, where the innkeeper puts them into a deep sleep and transports them to New Moon Island, the location where you can battle and capture the mythical Pokemon Darkrai. And the third key item distribution, Oak's Letter, lets you meet up with Professor Oak, and the two of you travel to the locations Seabreak Path and Flower Paradise to catch Shaman. A fourth key item triggered event was programmed into the code of Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, but never saw release in any region due to series director Jinichi Masuda believing this item would be too confusing for players to use. When activated at the Hall of Origin, this key item, the Azure Flute, would allow you to ascend a heavenly staircase to battle and capture the god of all Pokemon, Arceus. Although this event remained unused, the Azure Flute is the only key item based event in Generation 4 that isn't exclusive to the enhanced version, Pokemon Platinum. Instead of the key item distribution, Arceus was given away as a gift Pokemon for attending select screenings of the 12th Pokemon movie in Japan, and via select Toys R Us locations in the United States for one week in November of 2009. Retail distributions weren't the only use for the local wireless features in Generation 4. The mythical Pokemon Manaphy could only be obtained using the wireless features on the DS to transfer a special egg to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, that's unlocked by completing a bonus mission in the spin-off title Pokemon Ranger. Each copy of Pokemon Ranger only contains a single Manaphy egg, so unlike Jirachi from Pokemon Channel or the Colosseum bonus disc, creating a new save file in Pokemon Ranger or your Generation 4 game won't allow you to access multiple copies of this special egg. Obtaining Manaphy also grants the player access to another mythical Pokemon, Fione, as it can be easily obtained by breeding Manaphy with a ditto. Fione can also be obtained as a gift via the Nintendo WiiWare title, My Pokemon Ranch, by moving 250 Pokemon from any of the Generation 4 games into the storage application. Generation 4 also continued the trend of giving special events to legendaries from previous generations. By obtaining an event Regigigas that was met during a fateful encounter, the player can access new locations that allow you to capture the three legendary golems from Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. The Rock Peak Ruins for Regirock, the Iceberg Ruins for Reg Ice, and the Iron Ruins for Reggie Steel. Real creative naming there, Game Freak. Following Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, the Generation 2 remakes Heart Gold and Soul Silver also introduced a number of new distributions, including the first cross generation event. If you transfer an Arceus from Pokemon Platinum to Heart Gold or Soul Silver, it will grant you access to an additional special event in the Sinjo Ruins, where you get to witness Arceus give birth to a new legendary Pokemon, the player's choice of Dialga, Palkia, or Giratina. This event is widely considered to be one of the coolest and most unique in the history of the Pokemon franchise, as it was only available to the few people who were lucky enough to get an event Arceus during its brief distribution period, and the event itself is much grander than the majority of others. Since Heart Gold and Soul Silver are remakes of previous games, no new species of Pokemon were introduced. Because of this, events in these games mostly revolve around Pokemon that already existed at that point in the franchise, with the exception of the spiky-eared Pichu. 
In late 2009, early 2010, an event download for the Pikachu colored Pichu was made available for a brief period of time. Making this special event Pichu your partner Pokemon and taking it to the shrine in Elix Forest will allow you to obtain the Spiky-Eared Pichu, a special event variant of this Pokemon that can only be obtained in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Spiky-Eared Pichu cannot be transferred to newer generations, so unlike most special Pokemon variants, this form can only exist in those specific games. Another event triggered in Elix Forest is an updated version of the Celebi event from Generation 2. By taking an event Celebi to the shrine, you'll unlock a side quest revolving around Team Rocket, where you can battle the organization's leader Giovanni. Although not an in-game unlock, the mythical Pokemon Jirachi plays a special role when it comes to events in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. By transferring this Pokemon to the Pokewalker peripheral that shipped with copies of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you'll unlock a special route called the Night Sky's Edge, where you can obtain rare items like the Moonstone and TM29 Psychic. Two additional events unlocked via the special key item distribution method were planned for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, although only one of these events ever actually saw release. The first of these items, the Enigma Stone, was distributed internationally via the Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection Service during various periods in 2009 and 2010. Taking this item to the Pewter City Museum in the post-game of Heart Gold and Soul Silver will allow the player to interact with Generation 3 champion Steven Stone and capture the legendary Pokemon Latias or Latios depending on your version. The unreleased event key item, the Lock Capsule, would allow the player to obtain TM95 for the move Snarl when transferred to the Generation 5 games Pokemon Black and White. It's unknown why this item was never distributed, but TM95 was eventually made available through standard gameplay in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. Generation 4 is considered by many as the peak of special Pokemon distributions, and for good reason. Over 10 unique in-game events were introduced in Generation 4 between the release of Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, and Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Coming out of such a strong era, Pokemon fans expected the trend of new and exciting distribution events to continue in Pokemon Black and White, especially given the expansive list of legendaries added to these new titles. But out of all the countless amounts of legendaries in Gen 5, only one of these newly added mythical Pokemon received an event in the same vein as those introduced in the previous generation. This Pokemon being Victini, which the player can battle and capture in the location Liberty Garden, after completing a side quest unlocked by the event item, the Liberty Pass. The other three mythical Pokemon introduced in Generation 5, Keldeo, Meloetta, and Genesect, were all distributed as gifts via standard retail distributions or via the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection service. Although these Pokemon weren't given traditional in-game events, taking them to specific locations in-game would allow you to access short side quests used to unlock special moves or items that change the forms of these Pokemon, similar to the bonus events triggered by Celebi and the Pikachu-colored Pichu in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. After what was considered by many to be a fairly lackluster list of events in Generation 5, Generation 6 had a lot riding on it, especially since X and Y were the first Pokemon games on a new handheld system in a number of years. Upon release, fans noticed a number of locked in-game locations that seemed to tie into the series' lore, and hint at new expansive events for the Kalos native mythical Pokemon. Unfortunately, as time went on, these locations remained locked, and new mythical Pokemon were distributed via the 3DS Wi-Fi service or download codes obtained via local retail stores. Two generations later, this has become the standard for Pokemon events. Nothing of note has come about in terms of legendary or mythical Pokemon distributions since the early 2010s, with the exception of Meltan, which is exclusive to the mobile spin-off title Pokemon Go. With download and gift Pokemon becoming commonplace, and Nintendo shifting their focus towards improving online services for the Nintendo Switch, it's unlikely we'll see Pokemon events return in the same fashion as they appeared in Generations 3 through 5. It's funny how the Pokemon franchise has circled back to its roots. Using the same methods that were used to distribute rare Pokemon in Generation 1 and 2, only via the internet as opposed to in-person events. I'd love to know what your favorite Pokemon events are in the comments. I always really love both Darkrai and Deoxys, those were so cool and elusive. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon and Nintendo content. 
I put a lot of work into these history videos, so I really hope you enjoy them. And that's all I have to say about it, but who asked me?